Five-ish fangirls, I love you. And I'm one of the five-ish. In fact, I'm the biggest one of the five-ish. I am the sixth Doctor Colin Baker, and I wish you all well. Have fun. The tangents this week continue all the way to episode 247 of the Five Ish Fan Girls podcast. And this just in, uh, we got stuff to talk about. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fan Girls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like you do every week on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Chrissy's How's... back from the land of head colds. <laughs> yes, I'm still, I'm still a little, I'm still a little stuffy, but I, I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, I'm doing much better. Thank you all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. This is only the start of cult and flu season, so. <laughs> yeah. the, the worst thing about it, oh, maybe, I, I don't know if this is TMI or not, it's when, when you're pregnant, you can't take cold medicine, or at least my doctor told me not to, I can have cough yeah. drops, that's about it. Yeah. And so, cool. ugh, I get home, and I'm like, I can't do anything. Yeah, that doesn't sound like much fun. You think you would make something... You would think you would think so, but yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, the common cold, there's not really a whole lot you can no. do anyway. Right? No, it's just yeah. There's just a lot of things that interfere with with growing a, another human being, and they're like, just you know, the, the the less the less medication you're on, the better. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Oh. I must. <laughs> yeah. I will. Yeah. It's like, okay. okay. I don't want my kid to grow another arm out of her head. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so. All right. Well, we are going to do... This week's show is pretty much all news. So we're going to do things a little differently. Um, because of that, so kind of reverse order ish, I guess. Mm-hmm. So um, we're gonna do some, um, I guess, uh, housekeeping type things first. Um, sure thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I did. I did make it to Indian Touring Comic Expo yesterday, um, as we're recording this. So Sunday. Um, uh, unfortunately, the day before, I had a very full day, so I was moving a lot slower <laughs> than I intended on Sunday, combined with the rain on 37 going to Bloomington, where it was raining so hard I could barely see the car in front of me. Um, so I got there a lot later than I intended and therefore missed the all of the cosplay contests, including the adult uh, cosplay contest, which I was planning on entering. I had my uh, entry form filled out and everything. <laughs> but I got there too late. So I was a little sad about that. So, uh, but uh, I just, you know, I rolled with it. Um, ended up connecting with uh, Beth from uh, The Crafty Nerd and my work um <laughs> and this is her first time going actually um so we uh got to wander around look at the booth uh, she ended up buying uh some star trek related stuff she was there uh in her uh uh jensia dex costume jensia dex uh Awesome. Cosplay. Awesome. Yeah, I was like, I was looking at the spots, yeah, the actual spots on the picture she'd posted, and I was like, that is some dedication, and yeah. you know, I yeah. applaud her for it. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I was in my uh, my Time Buster uh, cosplay, which is interesting to see people's how people react to that particular <laughs> cosplay, because like the silhouette 
and everything and the, all the pieces parts if you don't pay attention to the color it just you know a quick glance it's like oh ghostbusters but then you look at it more and you're like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, i get caught it keeps on giving <laughs> yeah so i get a combination of people that are just like hey ghostbusters and they just keep rambling on like I'm dressed as a Ghostbuster and I just, you know, depending on who they are, uh, I, I may or may not correct them, especially the little kids because I don't mm-hmm. necessarily want to confuse the small children. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, and then some people, they get it. It takes them a moment. You can see like the process on their face <laughs> from <laughs> looking, recognition, putting the pieces together <laughs> and then coming to the final conclusion <laughs> so yeah it, it's one of those cool. you look at and you're like wait i know what that is but there's something oh okay i see what you did now it takes yeah. a to get there, yeah so. uh so but it was it's a it's a, a fun cosplay to wear uh, regardless uh, surprisingly comfortable too um That's always a plus which is always a plus <laughs> uh so, uh, but yeah, we just we wandered around a bit. Uh, like I said, she she bought some things. I looked at a few things, but didn't actually buy anything. Um, we ran into uh, Tony and Liz. Uh, one of the uh, artists there um, was dressed as <laughs> like Mirror Universe Evil Tony. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, friend, wow. friend of Tony. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you had the vest and the fez, uh, but no facial hair. So it was evil, Tony. Um, uh, so it was just it's it's a it's a fun little con. Uh, it's not something that takes like the whole day um, to go and. Uh, spend your time at but you could definitely kill several hours and it's five bucks um, and you know in my case I got to hang out with some good friends outside of in this case work <laughs> which is always nice uh, so um, I know that Billy has posted on the ITC Facebook page that while um, like as far as the charitable part of it um, they raise like the most money they ever have um, but and while the crowds were decent the numbers were actually lower than they normally have been and you know he's not entirely sure how much of that has to do with the weather the fact that the date was you know later in the year um, or what um, yeah some of those things are you never know <laughs> especially weather mm-hmm. weather's one of those strange things where it's like if it's an indoor event yeah, people may still be inclined to go because it's something to do indoors that's more interested than staying at home I don't know I'm not going to play crowd psychologist <laughs> uh, um, so uh, I don't know if they're going to keep it in October going forward or if they'll move back We'll see. Um, uh, the, more than likely, it will continue to stay on a Sunday. That's there's a, a component to that. There's a reason Billy has it on Sundays. Um, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see as far as dates for next year. So, but it was fun. I I enjoyed myself. So there was all sorts of stuff I could have bought. But I was good and didn't. <laughs> Other than the giant pretzel from the Irish pretzel food truck. <laughs> that was the only thing in my mission. That's the only thing I purchased. <laughs> it's a really good pretzel, too. Oh, <sighs> uh, so that's uh, that. Um, and then the poll for the book club is now uh, up and live. Yay. Yes, for November. Yep. So you can get your vote in for that. And of course, we are in a new month. So the discussion 
we can now move to the discussion for this month's book in Goodreads. Um, and then a thank you to um, everyone who uh, took the like 10 seconds it took to vote for my brother, the uh, plea call to arms I put out next last last week's episode. Um, and uh, thankfully, uh, I'd like to think that my <laughs> my pushing of it helped, but I know my brother did a lot of legwork, literally legwork. He was like going around to like his favorite restaurants and <laughs> trolling for votes and stuff. <laughs> uh, so between between everyone's combined effort, he did win. Yay! Awesome. So it was very close uh, between him and the person that came in second. Um, he got uh, 961 votes, which was 24.2%, and the person that came in second got 844 votes, which was 21.3%. Wow. So, yeah, less than 3% between the two of them. So it was it was close. He, he did drop to second there for a while, but then once he took first again, and I believe he stayed there, um, up and up and through the end so i'm not entirely sure when the event is um but i will i will keep an ear open and uh i will make sure to share that because a lot of that stuff is streamed usually on twitch um so you can potentially watch him compete when that event rolls around and until then if you want you can go if you use twitch you can go subscribe to his twitch channel which is uh the no good network so he and his fiance are he's on there more often than she is, but he's he's they're they're both big into the the, the fighting game community. So so thanks to everybody who voted. That's cool. All right, so we're gonna move on to a decent amount of news. This is a combination of just general news that's accumulated and also some stuff that came out of New York Comic Con over the weekend. Uh, New York Comic Con's not quite as big as San Diego, so it's not quite fandom Christmas. We don't need to quite dedicate an entire episode to it. Um, but there is a there are some fun and interesting things that, that did come out of yeah. come out of it. So uh, but Consider this is a com- it, uh- it's sort of a, a, a fandom news flash, Glor- yes. glorified fandom news flash. Yeah. But in this case, instead of New York you know, Comic Con being fan of Christmas, it's a um, fandom um, stocking stuffer. Mm. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna we're gonna bounce around here. Um, like I said, so it's a combination of. New York Comic Con and just others, other type of news. But first up, some uh, some convention news. <laughs> Speaking of conventions, um, just today actually, PopCon, uh, my local uh, homegrown convention that I consider kind of my home convention and personally one of my favorites. And I'm not just saying that to kiss Carl's behind. <laughs> um, they have announced a uh, part of the. Um, uh, convention next year is going to include a film festival. Awesome. Um, so they are going to, of course, we'll have the, the, the convention itself with its usual, um, you know, celebrity and uh, guests, including, you know, actors and voiceover artists and YouTubers and that, and that sort of thing. Um, there will also be the, the cosplay competition panels, the podcast awards, all that fun stuff. Um, but um, there is going to be um, a film festival. Um, so um, that's actually going to begin the um, 9th of July. So it's actually the day before PopCon starts, which starts July 10th. Um, but it will run through PopCon. Um, and um, uh, as far as tickets are concerned I, I i i haven't seen anything that says otherwise so i don't know if that the you know your popcorn ticket includes 
admission to the film festival itself. Um, if you go to, because I know tickets for the con in general are on sale and actually are um, at their like, cheapest price that they are <laughs> going to uh, be um, leading up to July. Um, so um, I should probably send them a message and ask about this. Like, does your yeah. pop kind of mission include admission to the film festival? Um, so there may also be some like special, special t- separate ticketed events though to go with it, possibly because I know some film festivals they do that as well, like after parties and things like that. Um, but um, if you want to enter a film. Um, you can go to uh, the link that will be in the show notes, and there is information as far as length, formats, um, the different categories, that that sort of thing. So, um, and of course, if you have any questions, contact the popcorn people. So, I can answer their questions for you. So, yay, I got something else to do. (laughs) (laughs) My weekend for popcorn wasn't busy enough. (laughs) Add to Rachel's schedule. I was going to say, are you going to make a film to enter into the film festival? (laughs) No, I just go watch. (laughs) Fair enough. Uh, So, um, uh, moving on. Uh, to some trailers. Uh, we got a new trailer and a release date for Star Trek The Card, um, which there's, if, you, if you're a fan of Next Gen <laughs> and certain characters, then you're mm. going to get some feels in this trailer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so. big time. Big time, big time. So. Hey, can, can we just can we all just do a collective like laugh and awe? He named his dog number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> we shouldn't really be too surprised about that. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, so, if you have CBS All Access or thinking about getting CBS All Access, um, uh, Star Trek Picard is going to premiere January 23rd. So, there's that. Um, And then on another streaming service, Disney Plus, um, Disney has released a trailer for um, a series that they're calling the Marvel Hero Project. Um, And the synopsis is essentially... Um, in life, it doesn't take it doesn't take wearing a suit of iron, carrying a mythical hammer, or swinging from spider webs to be a real hero. Sometimes, the person who can make a positive difference in the world is the person who simply sees a problem and has the passion to find a creative solution. Um, essentially, what is it, what it's going to do? I guess each episode is it's going to profile a kid. So the focus is specifically on kids who are. Um, making a difference in their community or in in some form or fashion. Um, And what Marvel is doing is they're taking what these kids are doing in real life and making them comic book characters and making them their own comic book that the public can uh, access each week on marvel.com. so the, the trailer is really cool. You've got kids that are, you know, doing things like, um, you know, trying to make it so easier for people with disabilities to be able to do like science projects and kids who want to help clean the environment and, um, you know, all, all sorts of it, it, it gives you it gives you the feels and the warm fuzzies that, you know, the, the generation coming after us. Is. There are those that care, which is awesome. So, makes me want to get off my seat and go save the whales or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's very inspiring. Uh, so, but it, that's really cool that Marvel is uh, 
is doing that and that these kids, you know, get to become literal superheroes in their own comic book. So that's really cool. So that's that'll be fun to watch on on that'll be available on Disney Plus. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, recently there was an announcement, which I it's really funny that this announcement happened considering just I, I'm not kidding, like a few days before I had been watching uh, some videos on YouTube of somebody comparing and contrasting the books with the film series and how true the film series was to the books and I was just thinking I should reread those because it's been a while (laughs) Mm -hmm. so I guess if there's enough reason for me to reread the Hunger Games (laughs) I have even more now because we're getting more books in the series uh, starting with uh, a novel called *The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes*, and uh, I, I have to, I have to say because you know I'm a librarian, I see all kinds of books coming in, brand new, and and I, I've I have noticed over the past few years this trend of YA titles to be the noun of noun and noun. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And mostly it's fantasy. Or the, fa- or the noun and adjective and noun. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's this big long thing and it's kind of, I think it, I want to say it started with like the like the Daughter of Smoke and Bone is the first one I remember. I don't know if that's the first one, but it was one of the first. And now every YA novel has to have, seems like has to have that, that convention, that, that title convention. And it just kind of is is amusing to me because I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, we're going with that. But yeah, so this is a, a prequel or precursor, yeah. I guess they're calling it. It's uh, the it covers the time of the 10th Hunger Games, which is an interesting one to pick, considering uh, in the in the, the lore of the of the Hunger Games world is the Hunger Games came about after um you know the the capital basically squelched all all rebellion or dissent from the districts and so now you have to you know force your kids to go play in the in the in these games so this is like only the 10th one so it's only been 10 years so you know think of where you know 10 years ago it really really wasn't that long ago if you think about it so you know they've been doing this for a, for a little while now but not it's but it's not you know the time before the, the Hunger Games were a, th- were a thing is actually still fresh in people's minds. Mm-hmm. You think about it that way. So it's like, you know, this is what happens when, you know, a group of very centralized, very spoiled, rotten, I don't know what to call them, <laughs> Author- authoritarian people are like, nope, you're going to do what we tell you because we say so and you have no recourse to stop it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I hope I guess it'll be a different perspective on the hung on on you know in the Hunger Games lore. It's kind it kind of feels it kind of feels a little bit like um, I guess Fantastic Beasts. What it, what Fanta- Fantastic Beasts is to Harry Potter. Yeah, but yeah. On, a, on a on a different on a different scale. I don't know. That's just my thoughts after seeing this. Yeah seeing this news and how it relates to everything. So we'll see how it yeah. goes. Yeah. Cause I mean, we're going to, in this case, I mean, cause this, it takes place 64 years before the events of the mm-hmm. original trilogy. So with maybe a few exceptions, pretty much every character we know isn't even born yet. So yeah, it's I'm just be- trying to think like even cause, cause Hey Mitch's were uh, uh, hunger games. I was the 50th. Yeah. Cause it was, it was the, one of the, the quarter quells. So yeah. it was like, he's not even around yet. And yeah. I'm just trying to think so, there may be some characters that they would be really young. You know, yeah. Cause they're like, President Snow, depending on how old he was, by the time we yeah. get to the, you know, he could be like or their kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I guess they could. There could be, especially in the capital, there could be some sort of, 
you know, anti-aging treatments that the that the the, the oh. capital citizens. I don't know. I've been reading Honor Harrington, and in that series, the they have they call what's called prolonged treatments. So I've I thought, well, maybe that's a thing, but it'd only be in the capital because that's where all the 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 rich and powerful and yeah. influential people. I mean, I mean, it is you know that's definitely not going to be out in District Twelve. Yeah. No. <laughs> And that would be definitely something the people in the capital would definitely would want to have. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're right. Like President Snow could be in this, but he would be a little kid or a teenager, maybe. Yeah. But he would definitely. He wouldn't. I. I don't think he would play a big part in it because um he wouldn't be playing in the Hunger Games because he's from the capital. Yeah. So he might just be like a cameo, a cameo appearance or something. Yeah. It'd be interesting because, you know, depending on where she decides to go with this, um, if, you know, we get like time jumps, because then we can see how the games themselves evolve with each year yeah. and as, the, as technology evolves. Because, you know, the 10th Hunger Games, while still, I'm sure, brutal, depending on how fast technology you know, yeah, what the technology was like then. It may have been more bare bones than yeah. What we it could have been just Katniss like did it, so yeah. It, it could have been just like here, throw them all in this coliseum like arena, and you know, have some clubs and and sticks have and rocks it. and go at yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas yeah. by the time Katniss they do theirs, it's you know, there's hovercraft and there's you know genetically modified genetic- monsters. <laughs> yeah, and they can yeah. they can make it. They can control where fire goes and and they and where they put, you know, poisonous insects and mm-hmm. whatever else there is. Dry up dry up water supply. I don't know. Yeah. Build build arenas out in the middle of nowhere and just for yeah. just for one yeah. one round of the hunt games. Yeah. Kind of funny how brutal that series is. Yes, <laughs> I know. I'm just like, oh, I know. Sometimes, sometimes, because I, like you said, well, I mean, I haven't reread the Hunger Games in a while, but like a couple years ago, I did go back and reread it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so. I forgot how awful all these people are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even cat, even Katniss, to a degree. I mean, I can I can understand why, but I'm like, you know, she's just not she's not really a very likable character uh-uh. <laughs> in the beginning, at least, because it's just I don't know. I just got this. I I was like, wow, I forgot just how mean she is to her mom. Yeah, I mean, she a gets a little better, but still, there's flashes, and it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, did I just miss this last time I read it, or was I? <laughs> Was I just too, too wrapped up in the excitement of oh I got to know what happens next? Mm-hmm. And now that I do, yeah. I'm like, oh boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how he's I, mean, I, I, she... like, I always seem to have like a new point of view when I read read a book after knowing everything, mm-hmm. and I can, I don't know. You so, look at things with a different perspective because you have more information than you had yeah, the, the, the other yeah. first time around. Yeah, you're like, oh, I know, I know how this is going to end, and it's just not. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> baby tears. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you do want to reread the original Hunger Games trilogy, you have time because The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is not set to be published until May of 2020. So. Yeah, and you've got really, time. Hunger Games is actually a really quick read. And yes. not just because mm-hmm. it's super easy, it's because she ends everything on a freaking cliffhanger and you have to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. yep. I, well, I think that was kind of the formula back. Mm-hmm. That was. Then when, that. Good point. It was. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, let's move on to a bunch of Marvel news, actually. <laughs> Got a lot more, a lot of Marvel stuff. Some of it out of New York, some of it not. Um, as we 
talked about last week, uh, the custody battle over Spider-Man has uh, at the moment been uh, figured out between Marvel slash Disney and Sony. Um, but after an appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel show, uh, Bob Iger um, has let it be known that actually Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland, was uh, an integral part of Sony and Disney figuring this whole Spider-Man thing out. Uh, apparently after... D23 Expo, which we know right before is when Sony made the announcement saying, you know, that Disney was not playing fair, essentially. And I'm um, still I'm still giving <laughs> Sony the stink eye over their yes. timing on that. I mean, I, I'm not oh, saying yeah. Disney Disney came out smelling like a rose over this, but Sony oh. really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your timing is suspect. But anyway, keep going. Yeah. 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 So after all that well, went I down. In uh, D23 Expo, um, Tom Holland was there because he was doing uh, press for the new Pixar movie Onward, which he uh, voices a character in along with Chris Pratt. Um, And um, so while Tom was there, he uh, essentially uh, talked to people uh, executives and people who were there uh, wanting some way, either a phone number, email address, to contact Bob Iger, who is the CEO of the Disney company as a whole. Um, and um, at first, they didn't want to, to give it to Tom just because, you know, he's Bob Iger and, you know, he's very important. <laughs> Um, but once Bob, uh, got word that Tom Holland went to talk to him, he's like, sure, give him my phone number. So Tom Holland, uh, called him and, um, said, uh, the, he essentially made a plea, uh, for Bob, uh, to try to figure this out so that, um, uh, both he and, you know, the fans <laughs> were, uh, uh, not left without uh, mm-hmm. the, the Spider-Man that we got to come to know and love. Um, so, uh, so after after speaking with with Tom Holland, Iger got on the horn with people at Disney Studios and at Sony, and they figured it out. Wow! So we actually have Spider-Man himself to you know uh, thank for this. So you know it. I, I got. I gotta say this, but you know that took some big brass ones right there. Because oh, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. okay, yeah, like like these actors, they go to conventions and we look at them and we're like, oh my gosh, you know everything about your character, and in reality, they kind of don't. Like they don't. I mean, they know about their character and they kind of know like what's in the script of the story, but like as far as the business side of it goes. You know, more time, more times than not, they'll be like, "Oh, you know, that's you know, someone else's decision." As far as you know, if you know the character is going to come back or, or whatever. I mean, how many? Think think of how many headlines, especially like with Doctor Who. I'm thinking of specifically, but there's some others where you know a, a, an actor will be at a convention and they'll be asked, "Oh, w- would it be you know would your character ever come back?" And they're like, "Well, if they ever asked me back, yeah." But they have no control over that. You know, the actors are actually pretty far down on the pecking order in terms of the business side of things. So for Tom Holland, as much as we love him and as big as a headliner he as he is as Spider-Man, to reach out to the head of the entire studio, you know. Not just the studio, the entire company. The, the entire yeah. company. It's not like he reached out to Kevin Feige. Like, yeah. he, this is like. Yeah, the like, top like of the ladder. I mean, I mean how many jokes have <laughs> we made about yeah. how much Disney owns? What yeah. what what all you know, what the Disney company owns? You know, Marvel, Star Wars, you know, the Disney Animation, Pixar. You know, he's over the whole enchilada here, and he just you know calls him up and say, uh, "Hey, can you like fix this problem, please?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, wow, Tom Holland, way to go, dude. Uh, <laughs> Well, and, and Bob Iger, to to his credit, you know, when he was on Kimmel, it, you can go on the, the Kimmel like YouTube channel and watch the clip, and he he even says in the interview, he's like, you know, you get people like me and the heads of like Sony in these positions, 
And you forget when you make a decision like this, just how many people it actually affects. Mm-hmm. You know, not it's the it's the fans, it's the actors, it's the directors, you know, it's everybody who works on these movies from, you know, the, you know Tom Holland, who is the face of the franchise all the way down to the person that gets Tom Holland his coffee. I'm sure, <laughs> you know, all of those people are affected when they when a decision like this is made. So, um, yeah, you know, that's uh, it's 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 good, you know, that uh, the the kid in the middle of the custody battle is like, okay, okay, mom, dad. <laughs> it's <laughs> like here, you guys. It's like sit down on the couch, work out your differences, and let you know. Let's figure this out. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, and it's like, I guess it, it says a lot to Tom Holland because it's like, you know, how many actors that have just said like, well, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Uh, Go, Tom. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. uh, and then uh, uh uh, Marvel um, out of New York Comic Con, there is an announcement um, from Hasbro um, who revealed a new line of figures, um, which is part of the uh, company's Marvel Legends line of figurines, um, which these are six inch uh, figures, but they have, a, have included one of Stan Lee. Uh, specifically, it's Stanley in the same uh, uh, outfit from the his cameo in the first Avengers movie, um, where he's playing chess. Uh, so he comes with a chess box, um, and then there's also a, he also comes with a, a version of Captain America's shield with Stan's autograph on it. Uh, awesome. Yes. <laughs> So Stanley is if, if he was already a legend already, but now he is a <laughs> he is a Marvel legend in action figure form. <laughs> so you could uh you know if you're if you're one of those people that does not want to keep things in the box, you now have your own little Stanley figure and you can have him make cameos just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm waiting like to watch something on YouTube because like I I watch some, like there's some videos like they use um action figures so I'm just mm-hmm. waiting for that. Somebody out there is gonna do that. They're like, yep, yeah. <laughs> Stanley cameos everywhere. Ah, uh, and uh, when you've got your Stanley action figure. Uh, you can uh, have him act along with all of his cameos um, <laughs> as you marathon the entire uh, Infinity Saga in the uh, new uh, box set <laughs> that is being released. Uh, so, yeah, so Kevin Feige has uh, announced, uh, confirmed that there is going to be a Blu-ray box set for what is uh, what they're calling the Infinity Saga. So that is all 23 MCU films. So from the first Iron Man up through Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to drop a chunk of change for this, but yeah, 23 movies. I mean, obviously. It's yeah. $549.99. <laughs> So it's five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it but is... there's 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 all kinds there's all kinds of goodies with it. Just you know, the movies obviously uh, at a, at an exclusive bonus disc that quote includes never before seen deleted and extended scenes and more. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, it looks really cool. The the, mm-hmm. the discs. The, the Blu-rays, when you put them in order in the box, it creates this really cool piece of art with Thanos. Um, and then you get a lithograph of that same art. Um, there's a letter from Kevin Feige. <laughs> um, 
inc- included in it. Um, so it's it's a really really cool looking set, and if you're somebody that you know has you know uh, has the movies, but maybe on DVD and not Blu-ray, and you want to upgrade, here's a way to do. It. I don't have a Blu-ray player, so it doesn't matter to me. It would just be really pretty sitting on my on my shelf. I'd have no way of playing it. <laughs> I don't have physical copies of them, but yeah, I would say I've got I've got the I've, we've only got the MCU up through like Iron Man two on disc. <laughs> After that, it is it is strictly digital. So yeah, that's that's about. I mean, I think we've got. Wait, is it Iron Man two? Is it we've got. One? I think we've got up to like Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know. All our stuff's boxed up. But yeah. yeah, there's the later ones we have all on on digital. Yeah, yeah, pretty much from four <laughs> going forward, it's 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 strictly all just digital. Oh, because then it, it's nice and compact, and I I can't I have everything on a hard drive, so it's like if I'm traveling or something, I can mm-hmm. just take that little hard drive with me, and I've got the MCU at my fingertips. So. Um, and then, uh, if, if having a Stanley action figure and owning the entire MCU for $550 is not enough Marvel, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, jumping in, uh, you know, completely Marvelizing your life, uh, enough for you. Um, Marvel Studios has announced Avengers Damage Control. Which is a new virtual reality experience um, where users are going to be able to uh, fight alongside superheroes like Doctor Strange, Ant Man, and others um, while using tech that has been created by Shuri, everyone's favorite Disney princess. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so um, if you are a, a familiar with this company called The Void, um, they've been around for a while. They're based out of Denver, I think, is where they're originally based out of. Um, but they are a virtual reality company, and they have kind of made a name for themselves for really immersive virtual reality experiences. They kind of exploded and got, became more well-known um, several years ago. Um, when they teamed up with Disney and they got the license for Star Wars and created a Star Wars uh, virtual reality experience that they put in um, at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And since then, they have also done a uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet um, experience. So now they're doing this uh, Marvel Avengers one and the thing that the void does is you you wear the VR headset like you normally would. Um, if you've seen any of the video of Chauncey doing his thing, then that should be <laughs> <laughs> familiar. Um, and uh, but then they also usually it depends on the experience, but they usually put some sort of like like a backpack type thing on your back, which doubles as like you know battery and some computer stuff and that sort of thing but um then they build they custom build these rooms and their vr tech allows you to walk from room to room and they'll set up things so that like if you need to go through a doorway you actually walk through a doorway in real life if there's a table and you reach out there is actually something that feels like a table there for you to interact with um and they incorporate things like sound and temperature and all these other things so that it feels way more like what you're seeing is what's actually happening to you in the real world um i also know at one point they 
they uh, had like a Ghostbusters experience, which was, uh, was supposed to be really cool. Um, but then the, the Star Wars thing that kind of that kind of like got them to be more well known in the mainstream. Um, Chauncey's known about them for a while, uh, of course. And uh, uh, so, but yeah, now they're doing this Avengers one that will be. Um, you will be able to do it at Disneyland at the moment. It's not going to be available at Walt Disney World, um, but it will, and it'll also be available at some of their other locations, including like Las Vegas and um, a couple other places. You can go on their website and see what locations have which experiences. Um, but this one will start at Disneyland um, real soon actually like october 18th i think is what i saw so really soon this month um so uh, now i'm like uh how can i get out to yeah starting october 18th uh <laughs> now i'm thinking how can i get out to disneyland <laughs> i've been wanting to do one of these void experiences for quite a while and like they they announced the star wars one um the last time that chauncey and i went to walt disney world a couple of years ago and it started like the week after we went home from that yeah. last trip to walt disney world <laughs> so, oh so. Uh, we've, it's just been it's, it's been hit and miss as far as these these void experiences. And eventually, we need to get to one of their locations and try out what it, whether it's Marvel or Star Wars or Ghostbusters or whatever. Just the it's it's very cool and along the lines of what Chauncey is trying to accomplish um, as far as what he likes to do with virtual reality. So. Um, it just, it's just so cool. Plus, you know, it's the Avengers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to interact with the Avengers? Like, yeah, exactly. sign me up. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> All so, the right to taxes. <laughs> yeah. Well, as soon as the uh, the the new the Doctor Who VR experience. As soon as that's available, I know Chauncey said he's going to get it so I can play with it. So, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, not as immersive as something from the void, but still. Mm -hmm. so once uh, once I get to try that, obviously, I will have a yep I'll be able to get a review on that. So, so that's it for the news, actually. Yeah, there was there was quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's probably a lot more out there that we just missed because, holy crap, so much coming out of Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, there was some repeat stuff. There was a lot of stuff from the CW. Like, I know, like, Riverdale, they released a trailer for the next season. Yeah. Uh, so, a bunch of TV shows released trailers, but it's not stuff that we necessarily cover yeah, I don't, know, I don't think any of us are Rick and Morty fans that I'm aware of. No, <laughs> so. not, not really. It's no uh, offense to the Rick and Morty fans out there. It's just not our cup of tea. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's all right. So you know, you know, if any of our listeners want to highlight something that they saw at uh, New York Comic Con or any other news type thing that that sparks your interest, and you guys want to share it with us or you know share your thoughts, send us feedback. And our, our email address to do that is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. And you can also interact with us uh, through our website, which is thefiveishfangirls.com. That has links to all of our social media stuff, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You can leave us comments. We count that as fe uh, the feedback as well. And we'll probably read it out on the show. And then you can also, uh, if you feel so inclined, support us through Patreon or our uh, merch shop or our Amazon store. And that's always very much appreciated. And thanks again to all of our people, all of our fans, all of our supporters who do that, because that helps us out a lot. Yep, yep, yep. 
Alrighty then. Well, with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Bethan saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Good luck, everybody! Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.